Hi guys, welcome to Encounter. It's great to see you all again. I can't actually see you. I'm looking at a camera and Ben, which is kind of disappointing. <laughs> but, but oh, you'll be fine. Let's get on with Taskmaster. Welcome back to another Taskmaster episode. Here with us we've got Taskmaster Nick Blanche, the director of Norwich for Christ, looking very, very conniving. And we've got Gary Watson, give us a wave. Hello. We've got Connor Burns, give us a wave. There he is. And we've got Blue Ben, give us a wave. How are you feeling, Gary? I'm feeling good today, especially after the last Taskmaster. Whoa, bring it on, yes. Yeah. Winner of the last Taskmaster, he wants to try and get two in a row, we'll see. Connor, how are you feeling? Uh, I'm looking forward to finally winning one today. Well, <laughs> it might not happen for you, mate, we'll see. Blue Ben, how are you feeling? <laughs> um, a bit disappointed about last time, but it's, it's fine. Right, well, hopefully we can do better this time. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Straight over to Nick to tell us the task then. Your task is to create your very own veggie tail. Yes! <laughs> Very own what? Yeah, I'm gonna need to do some research. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Ben, do you not know what a veggie tail is? Oh, I have no idea. You each have one question to ask about the task. Gary, what is your question? Do all the vegetables have to remain in one piece by the end of it? Oh, <laughs> not, this, not this what question. What is it that you guys are wanting to destroy <laughs> things? <laughs> No, that's not a serious question. Okay, here's my question. Does it have to contain a Bible story? I think if it's if it doesn't, I'm not sure it qualify as a veggie tale. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not so much a question, more of a, a refusal. I'm putting my foot down here. I say no this time. Nick, it's your turn to make a Taskmaster task thingy. And I hereby vote myself in as the new Taskmaster. All in favour? <laughs> Hands up. <laughs> Ooh. The tables have turned. Nick, Blanche, Literally. your challenge is to make a veggie tail. And in fact, while I'm at it, I'm going power crazy. Ben, you too. This is this is not a democracy. <laughs> <laughs> if it was called like potential thing that you might like to do, Master, <laughs> then then yeah. But it's called Taskmaster. We're setting you a task. <laughs> nice try, Connor. Though nice try. Yeah, good job. I'll get it next time. Blue Ben. What is your question? I don't have a question because I don't know what a VeggieTale is. <laughs> it's a cartoon. They're basically a children's series and you have these different vegetables who kind of talk and do things. Gary, how are you feeling about the VeggieTales task? I'm stoked. I love VeggieTales. This is going to be great. Awesome. Connor, how are you feeling? I have no idea what I'm going to do. Connor is just trying everything not to be a loser three times in a row. <laughs> Blue Ben, how are you feeling about the task? Also quite confused. I, I'll, I'll have to do some research before coming up with ideas for this task. Well, that's your task. Off you go. So I've never seen a VeggieTale, I don't know what one is. It's some kind of story is what I can gather. I think it's supposed to be Bible stories. I think the first thing that I need to do is watch one. So, it's the next morning following the Taskmaster Challenge announcement. I think we straight away need to address this. Now, Nick clearly wasn't very happy with my power grab yesterday, and he sent some heavies round to try and teach me a lesson. Managed to fight them off in the end, I mean, one of them got a good hit on me, but you should see the other guys, they're in a much worse state. Nick, why, why would you do that to me? Why would you send the grand to, to hurt me? It's just not on. Further reasoning for why I should be the new Taskmaster. Anyway, I've been thinking about what I could do for this, and I've come to the conclusion that no matter what I do, I will be disqualified just simply because I tried to grab power. All right, this is going to be great. I love Veggie Tales, probably even more than my kids do. I think I know what Bible story I want to do, and I've got some vegetables. I am going to use a lemon, a garlic, a fennel, and a slightly manky looking banana, which I'm going to make even more manky. I'll catch you in a bit. I've got to go and get some googly eyes from Tesco. Okay, I'm on my way to get my googly eyes, but I want my banana to look as manky as possible. So I'm going to place it down here in the sunshine. Fortunately, it's a lovely day today. 
Okay, so I've got a general idea of the format of Veggie Tale. In the interest of keeping it nice and short, I'll just do the section where they do an actual Bible story. And I'm thinking I need a nice short Bible story, so I think I might do Jesus walking on water. So, initial ideas. I'm thinking maybe I reenact the Taskmaster in a Veggie Tales format. Veggie Tales Inception. Filming vegetables that are filming vegetables. Filming vegetables doing Taskmaster. I don't know if I'm going to do it justice, and I don't actually know if I'm mentally, physically capable of doing any of this so we'll see we'll see how it goes but that is my idea so i got me eyes i thought i was filming myself in tesco getting them but no i just took a couple of nice pictures <laughs> is my eyes oh yes yeah, oh he'll do so found a paddling pool it now needs filling up with water and then we'll test out the boat and see what everything looks like Okay, so I've thought about it a little longer, and instead of reenacting this month's Taskmaster, I'm going to do the one where we had to propel ourselves across the garden. I guess you'll see the finished result next, so here we go. <laughs> Arrange our stage. Okay, I think we're ready. Welcome back, everybody. It's been an eventful couple of days, I'm sure. Gary, should we feed back on your little excursion there? Nick, what did you think? Yeah. I think Gary's absolutely in his element in a quite scary way, really. I am loving it. You all looked like you actually kind of enjoyed this. Once Blue Ben had got past the stage of not knowing at all what a VeggieTales was. Connor got past his fear quite early on, I feel. Well, we need to we need to address something here, don't we? <laughs> the heavies? We yeah. sent round the heavies? Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> you weren't happy with my power grab, so you sent people around to teach me a lesson. And then one of them in the fight got me right there, and so I had a swollen eye. I don't think you understand, right? If I was really that upset, there would be no heavies coming around. I would be coming round. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do to yourself? I went to bed one night and then I woke up and I had a swollen eye and I have no idea. I'm assuming <laughs> a fever. I don't know. <laughs> Blue Ben, as a complete newbie to Veggie Tales, how do you feel about it now that you've watched one? It's it's a little bit strange to be honest with you. I, li- I like the fact that you really put some graft into this, Ben, especially pumping up that paddling pool with an electric pump. It wasn't my idea. And Connor, we actually have no concept of what you're actually going to have done in your video because, well, you didn't show us anything. <laughs> <laughs> I-, I feel like I need to say thank you to Gary, though, because I didn't know what fennel looked like before today. I always enjoy your little setup, Gary. There's there's something about you sticking googly eyes on a, on a vegetable that just does it for me. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> uh, right, we're going to get on with watching the final Veggie Tale pieces. And up first, we have Connor. Welcome to Taskmaster. We're here with Taskmaster Nick Blanche. The floor is lava. Propel yourself across the garden without touching the ground. I'm going to use a pogo stick, so let's go. I'm going to use a sled, and I'm going to pull myself through the garden. so pleased with how that went. That was really impressive. And I think I'll use a swing. I think that'll work. Let's see how it goes. Okay, and the results are in. Over to Nick Blanche. Banana Blue Ben, what were you thinking? A pogo stick? That's just not a good idea. That was absolutely awful. Gary, I like the idea of you pulling yourself across the grass with a sled. Well done, but you didn't go very far, did you? And Connor, you clearly cheated there, didn't you? You rolled through the lava. Absolutely rubbish. You are disqualified. I've made my mind up, and the winner is Banana Blue Ben. Well done. Oh, thank you so, so much. I'm so surprised. Thank you so much. 
That's and great. I just oh, gosh. Everyone. That's <laughs> I'm fantastic. really sorry. Oh, Connor. What on earth? <laughs> I can't quite describe what I'm feeling now. I felt like the accumulation of the last two episodes got to a point of pure frustration and instead of actually doing the task, you just suddenly thought, oh, I'm just going to get really annoyed at this and be really sarky and, and grumpy with everybody. <laughs> the, impression, the impressions were awful but brilliant all at the same time. There's no logic to it. <laughs> Oh, I'm crying. There's another fairly serious flaw to your uh, to your video, isn't there, Connor? There was a question that somebody asked at the start of this video, and that was, does it have to have a Bible story? Does it have to contain a Bible story? If it doesn't, I'm not sure it qualifies as a veggie tale. I don't think it's a veggie tale if it doesn't have one in. Oh, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Whether or not you've actually made a veggie tale. What you've managed to do is, Instead of making a veggie tail, you've made a tail about vegetables. And then they're, they're not the same thing, Connor. They're not. Okay? You've completely missed the point. Well, Connor, we, we applaud you for your comical effort. Time will tell as to whether or not you will be the victor today. Moving on. And the next video is by Gary Watson. Hi everybody, I'm Gary the Garlic. And I'm Lucy Lemon. Today we're going to be looking at the Bible story from 1 Samuel 18 verse 27, where Saul the king asked David to... Uh, what? Oh. <gasps> oh, okay. Today we'll be looking at the Bible story from Mark's Gospel, chapter 3. <laughs> can I be Jesus? Yeah, you can be Jesus. Oh, goody! One day, Jesus, that's me, went to the synagogue. A banana with a wizard's body was there. Then a Pharisee was looking for a reason to accuse Jesus of doing wrong, so he watched him very closely. I'm watching you very closely. Jesus told the man to stand in front of everybody. Um, uh, there's only three of us here. Oh, uh... Jesus told the man to stand in front of Fennel the Pharisee. Oh, uh, stand in front of Fennel the Pharisee. Oh, okay. Is it right to do good or evil on the day of rest? Fennel just said, I'm watching you very closely. This made Jesus angry. <laughs> Benji Banana, be healed. Suddenly, Benji the banana was healed. I'm healed. I feel like a brand new banana. Then Fennel the Pharisee went out to figure out a way of getting Jesus killed. The, the end. end. Well, wasn't that a great story? Mm -hmm. What can we learn from that, Gary? Um, that Fennels look stupid in headdresses. <laughs> Apart from that. Oh, um, that, uh, Jesus wasn't afraid of the bad vegetable and healed the banana anyway. Close enough. Hmm. Oh, I feel so good. I want to put my hands up in the air and praise the Lord. Uh, Gary? Mm hmm You don't have any hands. What? Uh, oh. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> What an eventful episode of Veggie Tales. Um, it was uncanny to the original, in my opinion. Just mind blown. That was amazing. That was brilliant. Thank you. Yeah, you really captured the spirit. I feel like you could have your own like little spin-off. I did like the um, the kind of the rods, which were kind of like largely forgettable, apart from the bright yellow signs, which said ignore <laughs> this. And then oh, no. I found it impossible to actually ignore them. <laughs> Well done. I'm Larry the Cucumber. And I'm Tom the Tomato. What Bible story are we doing today? Jesus walking on the water. Jesus went out to them. Walking on the li Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. Come. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. Lord, save me. You of little faith, why did you doubt? Here we see that when Peter had faith, he could literally walk on water. But when he lost faith, he started to sink. This is to tell us to keep our faith in God. Then even the impossible becomes possible. <laughs> That's certainly concise. 
straight to the point. No messing. I I love those accents. Was that an attempt to be a Scottish man? <laughs> They're the only accents that I can even attempt. I tried to do their accents and that just didn't work at all. The story's there for sure. I just, <laughs> I'm not sure I got the true fear factor of it. Maybe it was the uh, maybe it was the cruise liner boat. <laughs> maybe that the vegetables were actually bigger than the depth of the water. I don't know, that just wasn't coming through for me. It was low budget, but it was high reward. You stuck to the time limit. You were about the only I'm one only who one managed to do it. Limit, let it be said. I'm concerned about the rest of it. The general lack of attention to detail with wiggling vegetables in front of a camera. <laughs> I did enjoy it. I just didn't think it was very good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd agree with that conclusion, to be honest with you. It was a laugh a minute, but unfortunately it was only half a minute long. <laughs> so, we come to the part of the show where we hand over to Taskmaster Nick Blanche to make his deciding decision on who this Taskmaster winner is. Nick. Could I go for an absolute curveball here? No, don't be stupid. It's got to be Gary, hasn't it? Gary. Gary, you've won two out of three. How do you feel? Okay. Oh, <laughs> very <laughs> humble about this. Just another day, just another day in the office, isn't it? I, I mean, you've got all I, the bragging well, no, rights. I feel for Connor. I really do. And that has been Taskmaster. We'll see you next time. So now we're going to go into a time of worship, and then we're going to hear a talk from Ruth Jackson from Premier. So I'm just going to pray to lead us into it. God, we're just thankful that we get to spend this time together with you. Amen.
got the weight of your glory I need a shelter, I was an orphan Now you call me a citizen of heaven When I was broken, you were my healing Now your love is the air that I'm breathing I had a future, my eyes were open Cause when you call my name I ran out of the grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You call my name And I ran out of the grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day As we approach Easter, one of the things I've been thinking about is whether we can prove that Jesus really rose from the dead. And I suppose it kind of depends what you mean by prove, because proof in its truest sense only really exists in the realm of math. So I can obviously 100% prove to you that one plus one equals two. But even scientists need to employ a certain amount of faith. So when they do science, they need to believe that there is a certain order to the world, uh, that when they do things, they'll react in a certain way because forces like gravity are in play. In a similar way, we also um, can't prove lots of things that we rely on on a daily basis. So you can't 100% prove that your mum loves you. There might be lots of evidence for it, but you can't 100% prove it. You also can't prove that the sun's gonna rise tomorrow. You might be able to look back and say, well, it rose yesterday, but you can't prove that it's gonna rise tomorrow. And you also can't prove that like the school bus is gonna get you to school without breaking down. But I think what we can do with the area of science and with these things that we sort of rely on every day is we have proof in the sense of a law court. So I don't know whether you've heard that phrase that lawyers use quite a lot, proof beyond reasonable doubt. Again, they can't mathematically 100% prove that someone has or hasn't done the crime. But what they can do is build up a case based on eyewitness testimony, confession, and other types of evidence. And I think that's the sort of proof that we're talking about when we're looking at whether Jesus rose from the dead. But if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, then we need to find another alternative to explain the empty tomb, the fact that no one's ever found his body. And here are a few alternatives. Well, maybe Jesus didn't die. Maybe he got into the tomb and the corners of the tomb kind of revived him and he walked out of the tomb. But I think the problem with that is even the word itself, crucifixion, um, the, the word that we use to describe kind of the most excruciating pain, which is like the worst pain you can possibly have, that word excruciating comes from the Latin word to crucify because crucifixion was known as the most brutal form of death and torture. But even before Jesus was crucified, he had a crown of thorns pressed into his head. He was whipped with something called a flagrum, which was um, a whip of leather with pieces of bone and metal, which would have torn into his flesh and ripped pieces of his flesh off. So he was in a bad way before he was even crucified. And then if we look at um, John's gospel, one of the gospel accounts, it talks about the fact that a spear was thrust into Jesus's side and out came water and blood, which is actually a sign of severe blood clotting in the arteries which points to heart failure which obviously ultimately leads to death so perhaps Jesus's body was stolen I mean maybe it was stolen by the disciples but the problem we have here is the people that were put in charge of guarding tombs of guarding dead bodies so that people didn't steal the bodies were Roman soldiers and apparently these guys were even more hardcore than Marines and you've got to think about whether the Jesus's disciples would have been able to overpower these guys. Jesus's disciples who would have been in mourning, therefore probably not eating properly, properly and weak, would they have been able to over overthrow the Roman soldiers in order to get the body out? Even if that was the case, I think something that's even more significant that we've got to think about is the fact that most of these disciples went on to be killed for their faith. Would they have died for something that they knew was a lie? I know I wouldn't. So maybe it wasn't the disciples that stole the body. 
maybe it was the Roman or the Jewish authorities. But I think the problem you've got with this is they were trying to disprove that Jesus had risen from the dead. They were adamant that he hadn't risen from the dead. And if they had his dead body, why would they not have wheeled it out to prove that he hadn't risen from the dead? So perhaps it wasn't the disciples that stole the body or the authorities that stole the body. Maybe it was tomb robbers. And this on first glance might be the most realistic option. But then you look a bit further into it and you see that what's left in the tomb is the expensive spices and the grave clothes that would have been used to embalm the body to stop it stinking when it had been rotting away for a few days. And what they took instead was a body that would have been worth nothing. So I don't think they would have stolen it either. So perhaps the people that claim to have seen the risen Jesus, maybe they were hallucinating. Again, there's a problem with this, and that is that psychologists will talk about the fact that people who have hallucinations are often people with vivid imaginations. And actually, a lot of the disciples don't fit this description. Just as a small example, you've got Matthew, who was a shrewd tax collector. You've got Peter, who was a tough fisherman. And then you've got Thomas, who's pretty much a born sceptic, born to not believe this stuff. The other thing with hallucinations is there's no such thing as a collective hallucination. You don't have a group of people all hallucinating the same thing. They might have different hallucinations, but not all hallucinating the same thing. And we hear stories of groups of people believing that they saw the risen Jesus. And in 1 Corinthians 15, you see a group of 500 people claiming to have seen the risen Jesus. That couldn't have been a hallucination. The final thing about hallucinations is they tend to be of expected events. You know, we hallucinate something that we kind of anticipate happening. And actually the, Jesus, the Jewish concept of resurrection, of people rising from the dead, was so unlike what happened to Jesus that it wouldn't have been an anticipated event. The disciples would have been just as surprised about Jesus rising from the dead as we are. So maybe they weren't hallucinating, but maybe those people who claim to have seen the risen Jesus, maybe they were lying. I don't know about you, but I've seen a lot of kind of fake news stories about celebrities recently. And what you see is that the celebrity doing everything they can to then inform the public that actually it's not true. They're on social media kind of demeaning the story and saying it's not true. They're, they're putting out their own story saying this is actually what happened. And um, I think exactly the same would have happened back then if Paul, who's sort of writing in the New Testament, if he had written a false account or if people were saying things that weren't true, then actually people who were there at the time would have jumped in to say that's not true. And what I think again is really significant in 1 Corinthians 15, which um, is a letter that Paul has written, he name checks individuals who claim to have seen the, the risen Jesus. And he even says most of them are still around, as if to say, go and ask them. If you don't believe me, go and ask them what happened and I think the fact that he's name checking them says look go and look at the sources yourself and see if you think it's true so they're kind of the other alternatives and I think when we're thinking about this stuff we've got to think what is the best way to explain the hundreds of people who claim to have seen the risen Jesus what is the best way to explain the fact that the disciples went from being pretty terrified and a bit useless to being fearless and going on to give their lives for this cause and what is the best way to explain this incredible sudden growth of the early church and I think actually the best way to explain that with no other convincing alternative I don't think is the resurrection the fact that Jesus rose from the dead and that may sound completely far-fetched but actually it's a little bit like what Sherlock Holmes says when you've eliminated the impossible whatever remains however improbable must be the truth Happy Easter. So, Ruth has given us some brilliant points to think about. We're going to go into another song now, which is an original song written by some of the young people from The Jam. So why not take this time to reflect on these questions? It was dark in the tomb
together as one immovable arm in arm immovable till it's done immovable standing firm immovable together as one immovable arm in arm immovable till it's So guys, that wraps up this series of Encounter. Thank you so much for watching. As ever, please like the video. Like the video if you didn't like it. Leave us a comment. Tell us which bits you liked. Don't tell us which bits you didn't like. You either liked all of it or all that guy? Who did he say? Who's there to- <laughs> Oh, hey bro. You wig, bro? I like your hoodie. I don't like it. I don't like it. Happy, Happy Easter. Easter.